Okay, hello Radio Land, all those out there, as we used to say when we were recording things, we say hello everyone in Radio Land because the disc jockeys would say that. All right, I want to wish everyone that is a believing Christian, a believer upon Christ, a believer in the Bible, a believer in my King, a very, very blessed Sunday. God bless you. God bless you on Resurrection Day. Uh, as usual, I'm going to talk about some things that people just simply don't talk about. Um, I want you, if you claim to be a Christian, and there's a lot of people that do, but yet they really don't believe. And Christ, even when he went to the Pharisees and and the Sadducees. Uh, the Jewish people of his day, whom he was a Jewish, he was Jewish. But he told them, he said, you don't even believe in God yourself. You claim him, you preach him, but you don't believe the, the scriptures, which he was referring to the Old Testament at the time yourselves, is what our king told them, and he was true. And I want to talk about us <clears throat> Christ claimers today, uh, Bible thumpers today, church goers today, and then the average everyday person that just claims the king but has no idea who he is. So, now why would I do that today? Uh, if you've went to church today and and now you are now seeing this <clears throat> if you are seeing this and you go to church later today uh, and you don't hear this this is what's wrong Christ defeated hell and Satan himself he gave every one of us that come forward and believe upon him a way out. Uh, people are falsely so called taking that way out. People are falsely telling you, which there's no prayer in the Bible. Get down on your knees and pray this prayer. You're free as a bird. Uh, I'm here to tell you no. You can, for those of you who are think you're a theologian or uh, biblically, biblically educated, you can call me a Calvinist. You can call me anything you choose to call me. Uh, but I'm not an idiot. And people are waking up to that mess. Well, how could you say that? Well, I say that because up until the 19, late 1960s, early 1970s, and all throughout Christianity, nobody was getting down and just saying uh, the sinner's prayer that man invented. Uh, uh, that prayer is not in the Bible. And just immediately getting up and going and doing what you want to do. Uh, doesn't work that way. Lest a man be born again. Lest ye repent. Repent means change. It doesn't mean perfection, but it means changing. Changing inwardly, which will bring change outwardly to those around you. Uh, but I'm not talking to you guys that uh, 
would be so educated you'd call me a Calvinist and oh I'm not doing it uh, for the majority of my life I've been an independent Baptist but I'm no longer an independent Baptist uh, no longer a Southern Baptist uh, I, I'm not taking any label upon myself any longer I am a soldier for Christ. Christ is my king, my God. That's who I am. That's my label. Um, well, why would you go away from the Baptist? Because the Baptist, uh, in the vast majority of the churches that I was in growing up through and for multiple, multiple, many decades a part of <clears throat> uh, are those people that Christ spoke of and he was telling the Sadducees and the Pharisees you don't even believe in the Bible Christ told them that I could say the same thing uh, in the Baptist Methodist Presbyterian and uh, uh a lot of the other churches, the Lutheran, uh, uh, Wesleyan, uh, many of them. And the reason why I say I could tell them the same thing is they don't believe that there were giants. Hence, they really don't believe that David slew a giant, and he did. Uh, we don't know about the creation. They don't believe the creation. They don't believe that the earth was created in six days. Uh, they don't believe that Christ is going to come on the last day and gather his people up. Uh, you're not going to get swooped up by a vacuum cleaner. That, uh, that basically came around in the uh, mid or late 1890s because of... Uh, a little girl had a dream, and that dream took off through the church in Ireland, and before you know it, it was around the world. And every uh, 60 years later, it, the, her dream turns into uh, a, a rapture before any hard times come, before any tribulation comes. And the Bible does not speak of that anywhere, anywhere. You will not find it. People take verse, a couple of verses. They've got like two verses out of all of that monumental rapture up before any hard times come. And they twist those two verses to try to make them fit. And they really, the, they wouldn't apply it uh, pre-trouble rapture anyway. So you're not going anywhere. Uh the Bible doesn't say that you are. So it's a lot of false stuff going on. They don't believe in the end that it's going to happen like the Bible says. Uh, they're pushing uh, to get the third temple back up in, uh, in Israel. Uh, failing to preach on, failing to preach on, that the third temple, uh, that it, it's going to be occupied by Satan and uh, uh, the the monster that's going to come. Uh, just a whole host of things, a whole host of things. So I want to talk about right now on what Christians that think you stand bold. Uh, you, you, you really, you, oh, you love Jesus, do you? Do you? Uh, let's talk about that. Um, the hell on earth and the torture that Christ went through. And I, and I would suggest to everybody watch The Passion of the Christ. Jewish people don't want you to watch it. Uh, it was the Jews who picked to murder Christ. It was not Pilate. Uh, you better get that out of your head because you're you're believing and promoting a satanic lie. 
Now, am I saying people should go kill Jews today? No, I'm not. I'm not going there. <clears throat> but I am saying that the Zionist push over here is completely satanically led. All of it. And if you're in a church that promotes that garbage, you better get out of it. The third temple is going to be established by Christ himself in reality. Man is not going to build the third real temple. Christ will do it. Uh, but let's get down to the, do you love, do you really love Christ? You, you know, is everything you say, is that real or is that a bunch of malarkey? Christ was tortured to death. Let's, let's talk about that again. Christ was tortured to death. All the people came, not all the people, but the 98% of the crowd came out there, maybe 90%, maybe 80%. But the vast majority of the crowd came out there. They spit on him. Uh, they called him every name in the book. And they killed him. They murdered him. They wanted him dead. They couldn't do it. And they couldn't do it today. They're trying today to spiritually kill Christ Jesus. Well, what have you talked about? What, what, what? All right, well, let's talk about your love for Jesus. Uh, you love Jesus, do you? Uh, is your love for Jesus letting... Uh, child abusers, uh, molesters, teach and run your schools, and you sat back and send your kids to these people? Hmm. Remember, Christ and these apostles were tortured and murdered. Uh, the Christ you're worshiping tells you he won't, you you give one dollar he'll give you seven back and he wants you to have a new car and uh, a house and everything to be prosperous and for you to get that job promotion and all that. Do you love the real Christ? Do you even know who he is? Does your church even know who he is? Most importantly, does your preacher know who he is? Uh, because most of you are going to sit back and say, yeah, my preacher knows who he is, and your preacher has no idea. The real Christ, the real teachings, the real any of it. You stand around today, and instead of uh, pushing and being a good Christian soldier, uh, and being a spreader of the word, you stay silent in your weakness while these lunatics run around saying, a woman saying they're a man, a man saying they're a woman, them going up in the bathrooms, and you just sit there, shh. My friend, you don't know who Christ is. You're a coward if you do. And you are claiming a salvation that you will not get. Christ said, I'm going to look up and say, Father, they, they shouted my name. Uh, they praised my name. I don't know who they are. Never met them. And you don't want to be in that crowd. You don't want to be in it. The church has fallen away. Christianity, which is the people and the body, has fallen away. It's in the present, falling away. 
that's following. And if you would simply uh, get biblically educated instead of listening to a parrot telling you how much Jesus loves you as he gets into his $100,000 car and goes back to his half million dollar house and works two or three days a week and sucks the living blood out of all of you that that work all the time. That's not Christianity, folks. It's not. If you love Christ and and you hurt as any normal human being would for what he went through for you and me, you would easily, if you had a decent heart, would stand up and combat that sort of mess. If you loved Christ and you loved any values, godly values of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, you would be out here fighting. You would be putting videos up and instead of at the end end of the video, God bless you. Uh, that's doing. That, what is that doing for the Lord? You would be fighting this mess publicly, in public. You would not be worried about a YouTube channel. You would not be worried about uh, your next gig. Uh, if you're a fighter, a boxing trainer, uh, a fight coach, uh, anybody. And I don't care who you are. You could be the school superintendent for the county. Your ass is going to burn if you do not publicly stand up and profess the real and true Jesus Christ. You are in a church where all you hear is praise God. Praise God. Jesus loves you. And you're not getting into the condemnation that is tearing your children down. Uh, You are a sick puppy. And you will not live. You don't possess life. You possess satanic death. If you are not speaking up to the evils of this world. Well, I can't. Well, let me tell you something. Up until about 50, 70 years ago, people did look down upon a man laying with a man, a woman laying with a woman, a drug addict over here, a raging alcoholic over there. We shunned them. A daddy would look, look down at his child and say, Look over there, son, at the edge of the parking lot here. Look at the bums. The bombs laying up there. That is what will happen to you. You will be trash like that. Uh, if you do what these people are doing. Daddy tells boy today. Let's pray for them and let's be kind to them. And let's go give them $20. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with giving. And I'm not talking about judging those people and it is not judging to tell your child uh, you be promiscuous out here Uh, don't be surprised when you get HIV or or you get gonorrhea or you get some of these other uh, STDs you lay with filth you will become filth you hang with filth my son or my daughter you will become that filth There's no judging in that. It's truth. You got daddies running around today. Why are you not mentioning mamas? I'm not mentioning mamas because on the totality of it, a mother is minor in the family. She's equipped to do other things, but to lead and to teach, she's not equipped to. 
she's not equipped to. Let me tell you all something. Well, you're getting on my... Let me tell you about my mother. My mother would get up and work till... Uh, go to work, leave out about 5 or 5.20 in the morning. My father died, and my mother struggled for a long time after that. Would be at work at 6 o'clock, working at a truck stop, and she worked double shifts, you sniveling complainers, uh, cleaning up shit after truck drivers, until 12 o'clock at night and would do it five or six days a week. So mothers can be very important, but they are not the leaders. You go into a church, you're going to, you see a woman leading and leading in prayer and up there babbling and up there at the uh, pulpit preaching you are seeing a church led by exactly what the bible calls a jezebelic spirit it's not what christ went through all that for in his love for you or me Preachers running around today too scared to say anything. Uh, I watched an old preacher. I'm going to name this old man now. I watched him for a long time. Old Tennessee preacher. uh, Charles Lawson. Thought he made wonderful sense to me. Well, they will never come to cut shut this church down. I will never, ever, no matter what comes around, as COVID was starting. One or two people in the church get the flu. He shuts the church down and runs off. See, it's all a good game. All a good game. Now, meanwhile, he's got his good fancy car. His children are took care of. His wife's took care of. He's got his nice home to live in. When it came down to God, he ran. Scared to death of dying. And that's how you can spot a false Christian. Let me tell you about myself, for example. I'm not scared of dying at all. But I have a selfish part of me that wants to see my son grown into fruition and well into adulthood. So, I, uh, And you know what? It's a trust issue I'm working on with God. Because you could flip the script on me and you could say, and you would be rightfully so, hey, if you uh, were all this and all that, you'd trust that the Lord's going to take care of your son. See, I got some selfishness there. I have no doubt that the Lord's going to take care of my son. But on the other hand, I'm selfish and I want to see it. Uh, plus I know I'm the authority in my children's life. My wife is not. She is an authoritative person in their life, but she's not the authority. That would be me. There's no other way that can work. No other way. Uh, If you don't believe me, just look around at all these families where these women have up and left their husbands or bad husbands have up and left their wives and look at the results of all this shit. Look at the the, the result to the culture of it. See, you got to open your eyes, folks. There's no, there's no trick questions going on. The trick is you have been tricked. Your emotions get played with. Well, that single mother, oh my God. My mama was mama and daddy to me. Uh, You see that, and like the story I just gave you about my mother, and you start saying, well, everybody could could do that. No, they can't. No, they can't. 
most single parented homes minus a mother and especially minus a father the father's the real deal minus chaos confusion death and destruction drugs death alcohol death uh, crazy death 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 I don't care what you think the truth is the truth is the truth. So, I want to ask, number one, I want to tell the young people that watch, watch me, you stand up. You said somebody's got gray hair in their beard or their hair, all wrinkled up or cut up like me. Be careful listening to people that look like me. Be real careful. Because most people that are my age look like me, maybe a little battle-hardened, uh, maybe a poo boy that just made it on through. Our generation was very confused, and we have almost killed your, your generation coming up off by our being candy asses and not standing up and not being soldiers. It's the truth. It's the truth. We, my generation, has begotten the bullshit that you're living in today for not standing up. I've played my part in it. Look, folks, I'm damn near 100 year old. I, there ain't much more. I'm going to make it. And I'm, I'm starting to prepare to meet my king. And I don't want to go up there saying, well... You know, I was one of the ones that was too scared to say, you know, I don't, I don't think in, in in this world, in this generation, and I don't think in, in Christ's generation where he was walking physically on this earth and the apostles, uh, are you unaware that they all stood up till they were tortured and murdered? Well, we know all of them were, uh, one of them, I believe, was murdered and tortured as well, uh, but there's there may be one exception to the group that didn't get tortured and murdered. I want to be like that. I, I don't want to be the guy with a, a Bronco and a Cadillac for the wife uh, in a nice home and going in working two or three days a week and having to take effing sabbatical vacations and run off so I can think and be with God so I can come back and teach you all the while I'm got, I'm, I'm r sucking the blood out of working people. Young people that nobody like that is the way to do it. If you've got a, if you've got a daddy or a grandpa that is preaching, you better tell them get out here and get a job. Be giving instead of taking. Be giving instead of taking. Be like the apostles. This fictitious fantasy fairy tale that has been brought up that you should suck the life's blood out of a working man and Jesus wants you to do so because you were something special is not right, not true. It is false. It is Christianity falsely so-called. I was a kid... The preacher worked at a textile mill. Most did. Most did where I, where, where I come from. Making socks or underwear. Or making thread for the Lily, Lily Thread Company. Most did. They'd have their first, second, or third shift job. On top of that, they'd go in there themselves and clean the church up. On top of that, they'd go out there and mow the church yard. On top of that, we didn't even have weed eaters back then. They'd pull the weeds. 
you'd be edging with your hands or with a pair of cutters. Squeeze those cutters an hour and see how your hands feel. And you got punk ass bitches running around today. Christ loves you. Uh, he wants to give you a house and a car. You know what? You got to go. And young person, don't buy into that crap. Don't buy into that television bull mess. Don't buy into the internet preacher. Don't buy into none of it. You want to be a good person. You want soup for your soul. Give others your blood. Give others your food. Give others your riches. Don't go out here running to people that are taken and giving to them, expecting something in return. It's not the way it works. Uh, it's not the way it works. These damn fools on TV, these damn younger fools wearing cut up pants. dreadlock hair trying to look as hippie or as bro as they can hood bro they have no idea who the true Christ is no idea no idea at all so you really love Christ do you do you really you've sat back you've made a life's work a Going down here to Corner Church House, uh, reading your Bible, telling people how much Jesus loves them, and you ain't stood up against men going inside of little girls' bathrooms. Now, don't come handing me, you got your salvation and it's intact. I'm handing you. Christ on words, Father, I, they said my name, they used my name, but I never knew them. That's what I'm standing on. I'm not standing with you. It's as simple as that. As simple as that. Joe just beat the shit out of a guy in the gym here a week or two ago. Guy's all upset. He comes back with a knife. Uh, we, we're, we're not brewing cowards over here. Not who we are. Not who we are. That being said, Peter was the strong apostle. Peter was the abrasive guy. Peter was the strong guy. He got humbled and ran off in a cowardly way there, didn't he? But by golly, he came back strong. And when they went to hang him, he said, I ain't good enough. Hang me upside down. You people can't do nothing to me. You're going to destroy my body. You can't have my soul. You can't have my eternity. And then you got pib squeaks, and now women, effeminate men, they seem to think they you owe them the big, nice, shiny car for him and his wife, and the beautiful house. You don't owe them nothing. God don't owe them nothing. These are some of the things we need to think about on Resurrection Day. Who did Christ resurrect for all of us but those who continually to work against him? You should stand up and be against. Don't be a fool. Try to gain wisdom. 
Jesus didn't latch on and parasite out of nobody. These apostles didn't latch on and parasite out, out of nobody. Those damn fool rabbis up there uh, latched on to Pilate and the Romans and the authority, sucking the blood out of them to kill and murder Jesus and and torture him to death before they put him on that cross. And you got fools in the Baptist church, fools in the Methodist church, fools in the independent churches, fools in the primitive churches, Presbyters, the whole nine, Catholics, everybody. And they don't even believe the Bible themselves. There weren't giants in those days. The flood was local. Creation wasn't a literal six days. The ending is not going to be literally like the Bible. They don't believe none of it. That's how they can far-fetchedly go out here and think that they can be a parasite and suck the working blood out of you or me or anyone else. That's why they have no conscience when they're walking forward. It's time for them to be known. It's time for them to be outed. It's time for everybody to be outed. Your job as a Christian should be to tell the truth and expose the lies. How about that? Your job as a Christian should be to tell the truth and expose the lies. Again, how about that? What local church house down at the corner are you hearing that out of? And, and you can't dispute that. Uh, what uh, internet ministry are you hearing that from? What TV preacher are you hearing that from? When it comes down to it, all these guys that are real popular online, that preaching to itching ears, line in their pockets, have a good safe, good retirement plan, good medical plan, good everything, good car, good house, good this, good that, good vacation time, good all this stuff at your expense. That ain't why God got up there and allowed himself to be crucified on that cross. It's just not it. It's not it. These people should be ashamed of themselves. And let me tell you something. I told you all here recently a while back. Most of the liberal candies out there, you got a little imaginary ring around you. It's about the size of a hula hoop. And you think that's your little zone. When I, when I come around, it's three foot in front of me, three foot to any direction of me. You bring that shit up in my circle and I will bash the hell up out of you. My son will bash the hell up out of you. Our stable will bash the hell up out of you. Literally. You gonna come up in around us and, and, and be a 30, 40, 80 year old man and go in the bathroom with a, a 8 year old little girl? Uh, you're going to get your ass pulled out of that bathroom and you're going to get your ass beat. I don't care if it's in a Planet Fitness. See, see, that's my thing. All of you are, the stock fell $400 million. Uh, and it should have fell $400 million and you're right for disliking that. My point is, a woman comes out of the Planet Fitness bathroom and says there's a damn man in here shaving and a... 10-year-old girl over here, I'm going in the bathroom. I'm correcting that man. Just like that. What are you going to do? I got no problem with uh, uh, no more than Christ the King himself had running around with the whip at the church, flipping over tables and cursing as he did it. And whipping people with it. I got no problem going in a bathroom and uh, pulling a man out, whipping the sh shit out of him as I'm cursing him and jerking him by the head of his hair or the nails of his toes. 
and slinging him out of somewhere. I got no problem at all doing that. You do. But there again, you are being led, you are being taught, and you are being tugged on your emotions by satanic, demonic forces that cloud your emotions into going down the wrong road. I don't have that. I just don't. And I'm not going to start it. You go up in... You go up in a bathroom with a little girl up up around me or my son or the, the men I hang around. See how it works out for you. You go into a damn store I'm in and you're six foot two and weigh 220 pounds all muscled up and put a little bit of eyeshadow on and cuss everybody in the store out cause they because they're not addressing you as a woman. I... I'll be happy to jerk you yeah, ass out the store and correct you. See, got no problem with that. People are doing these things because people like you allow them to. And, ha- and people like me in the past have allowed them to. And we have not corrected these people. Don't be misled no more. Stand up for Christ. If you love him, you'll stand up for him. If you love him, you'll be the one person out of the group of the hundred with 99 people shouting at you, telling you how bad you are and how much of a bigot you are. And you'll proudly do it. You'll, you'll, you'll stand there with a the puffed chest while they're doing it to you. Happy as a lark. If you're real, it's going to happen to you. If you are real. If you're not, you're just going to walk down the worldly normal flow. No sweat off your back. You'll be just fine. But when you're on your deathbed and you got your last breath and people are standing around you and uh, uh, they can't see that demon coming up from the foot of the bed and coming up on you and it's going to get on you and it's going to suck the last bit of life out that ugly looking monstrosity demon, that monster and he's going to drag you down to hell and there ain't going to be nothing you can do about it because the power of Christ will not be there and you'd have ten family members sitting there looking around Ain't nobody even going to see it. There ain't going to be nobody to help you. Start thinking about that. You love God, do you? And you won't even publicly voice for Him. Time to start critiquing one another, fellow Christians. It's time to start calling one another out. Uh, not over Bible passages and eschatology and theology. It's time to get real with ourselves. The falling away has commenced. Happy Easter to everybody. That was my message for Easter. I want you all to know I do have some love for you. Uh, even if you're one of these aforementioned uh, babies or candy asses, I I love you. Uh, but there's a battle going on. It's spiritual warfare. And the time for being nice as we're approaching the end, there's no time for that any longer. Uh, be careful out there. Look at everything. Is this right? Is this wrong? Is this black? Is this white? You're being lied to from all ends. What makes you think down there at the corner church house you're not being lied to? Wake up. Wake up. Go by the Holy Scripture. Go by the Holy Scripture. That's why we have the Holy Spirit to help us understand the Holy Scripture. You'll never understand that Bible, ever, if you don't have the Holy Spirit. If you're not in changing for Christ. So, remember what I said. 
uh, take it all in. It's nothing decent about what I said. Uh, yet it was all decent and all grand and all gold. Maybe it's time you start start realizing and saying the same things. Maybe you maybe you possess a lot more wisdom than I do, and you can say things in a better way. Just start doing it. And sitting back and saying, God bless you. Jesus loves you. Come on, man. Come on. Get real with it.